damn pushing Alyssa's car. Fixing the damn problem by myself. Who needs a guy when you have me? So three hours later of trying to get Alyssa's car to work. And uh, it's clear to say that I had no f***ing clue what I was doing. And I guess we do need men for sh because the whole inside of my car exploded and Whoa, caught on fire. I'm trying not to laugh because she just destroyed two cars, but this is still kind of funny. I don't know that much about cars, but how do you not know that you can't mix up the positive and negative end when you're trying to jump a car? Isn't that common knowledge? This happened in July of 2018. She has a smartphone. You could have just looked it up. Though the one thing I do appreciate about this video is that when she failed, she humbled herself and said, okay, maybe I do need help. That's way more than what you would get from the typical radical feminist that we see in media all the time. Men mostly get unappreciative crap like this. I got, I ha went to Indiana Jones and Jaws and every movie that Steven Spielberg's ever made. And by the way, he's never made a movie with a female lead. Sorry, Steven. I don't mean to call your ass out, but it's true. Not only was Elizabeth Banks incredibly wrong here, but the better response that she should have given to Steven Spielberg is, hey, thanks for creating a lot of well-liked movies that have allowed the film industry to be a success. I really do appreciate all the money I've made from this industry that is largely held up by male creators. Because not that many people are smart enough to create successful films that tons of people want to watch. This lack of appreciation is why I cannot believe that feminism is actually about equality. Feminists constantly undermine men for the things they do. Also, there are videos like this where they are trying to redefine what the word equality means so it fits what they really want. Feminism literally just means you believe in equality of the sexes. To me, feminism is about equity, much more than it is about equality. Well, that was a radical change in the definition of what the word feminism means in the course of a few seconds. I've heard multiple feminists grift on different occasions and say that equity is like two people looking over a fence. One guy is shorter, the other is taller. Equality is giving them the same size stool. Equity is giving the short guy a taller stool so he ends up the same height as the tall guy. This way, both of them can see the same amount. Okay, that's a rough definition of equality of opportunity, but that's not what feminists mean. Because no matter what simplistic metaphor they use, when they show equity in practice, it ends up being used to describe equality of outcome. When people apply for higher positions in a company, equality of opportunity is giving everyone a fair shot. That's not what feminists want. They want 50% men in upper management and 50% women, regardless of who's more qualified. That's equality of outcome. The end result must be that the company has half men and half women in management positions. It's the same with the wage gap. Men and women must be paid the same regardless of reasonable variables that cause differing wages. Men work more hours. They take less time off. They work more overtime. Men work riskier jobs, and all of the trades that keep society running are pretty exclusively worked by men. Saying women should be paid the same or receive the same outcome when they don't work as much as men is not equality. That's supremacy. Equity and equality of outcome is a supremacy movement. Feminists don't want to work with men as equals like they've been saying. They don't even recognize the importance of the guy who turns a wrench and keeps the power on. All of their actions show that they want to bring men down, and what that results in is things like that woman from the intro who destroyed two cars by setting them on fire and her having to call the fire department to extinguish said cars. Look at how many resources that arrogance, which was taught by feminism, cost her. Let's get more into it, but first... If you like the content you see on this channel, then consider making a donation. Viewer support helps keep me independent, and it helps fund the channel. Links to my PayPal, Patreon, and Subscribestar pages can all be found in the description. And also, don't forget to support me on Alt Tech. Links to my Odyssey channel and my Minds page can be found in the description as well. Alright, let's move on to Good Morning Britain as we watch a feminist telling women to get mad when men do nice things for them. Why is it remotely patronising for a man to open a door and say, please, ladies first? Where I think that the ladies first thing becomes quite patronising and the younger women feel really passionate about it is because they feel it comes with a whole load of other assumptions. Mm. Wait a minute. Did she just say what I thought she said? 
Did I just hear a feminist saying that you can judge a book by its cover? No. I must have misheard something. Let's hear it again. It's because they feel it comes with a whole load of other assumptions. Mm. I can't believe I just heard that. She said that certain behaviors are predictive of other behaviors. Thank you, Eleanor Mills. I agree. But please, continue telling us why opening a door for a woman is offensive. It's just being a gentleman. No, it's an attitude that they think women are rather kind of fragile, delicate vessels that might break if they're not kind of looked See, after in a very careful that... way. And that is patronizing to a, young, okay. a load of younger women. In they the... feel they should be treated as equal. In... Gee, where exactly would we get the idea that women are fragile and need to be protected? There are so many different levels and facets of oppression besides womanhood, womanhood and then color, womanhood and then economic opportunity. Those things just add on top of the weight that, <laughs> that happens when you identify as a woman in our culture. Are you strong and powerful or are you a victim? You can't be both because if you were strong, powerful and didn't need men's help, then you wouldn't be oppressed. Honestly, what kind of person has this take where she sees a gesture of kindness or a compliment as an insult? That is a red flag for any kind of relationship. If you do a favor for someone and they lash out at you saying, I could have done that myself, then don't do favors for them. If it's someone you just met like a first date, then drop them out of your life. But seriously, who has this take outside of the writer's room at BuzzFeed? These are not things that people naturally believe. Now, a big thing that I like about Good Morning Britain is that when they have these conversations, they specifically put people with opposing views in the same room. Let's hear the opinion of the other woman on the panel, Lizzie. I think it is so refreshing and delightful for someone to actually take the time and open the door for you. It's nothing about belittling someone else or looking down on someone. It's about being, having manners. Before I say anything else, I just want to point out that the woman who takes care of her weight, has long hair, and has a feminine demeanor is the one who actually appreciates favors. It's almost as if the person who appreciates it when men do things that she finds desirable pays it forward by taking care of her appearance and pays it forward by not having an overly confrontational personality, whereas the one who doesn't appreciate the favors doesn't recognize behavior that is desirable to men, therefore she doesn't do desirable things like taking care of her weight. Personally, I don't think this feminist understands the desires of most women either. Eleanor, do you ever listen to women? Maybe the 10% of women who are staunch radical feminists don't like having doors open for them, but the vast majority of women like it when men do favors for them. I think I've shown plenty of evidence of that on this channel. Eleanor is so out of touch that she says women don't like having dates paid for. So the kind of man who might go ladies first or pull out your chair or um, very much pay for dinner is kind of expecting something back. It's an attitude. Why? Why would you... Is she serious? Please, this must be a troll because I've met some pretty devout feminists and even they still want their dinner paid for. Every day, I have some lovely uh, women in our makeup department. Who, yeah, but just that phrase is pretty patronizing. Some kids. lovely women. Yes. I always <laughs> say, as a matter of course, thank you, ladies, right? Is that yeah. offensive? I mean, Younger women really hate being called ladies. They how do I describe the people who are in my makeup department? What do I call them? They're fantastic. They're professionals. They do a great job. What's the difference? Lovely, fantastic, great job. They're all the same compliments. Let's look this one up because Eleanor is insistent that women should absolutely not be called ladies. Here it is, the definition for lady. First definition, a woman, used as a polite or old-fashioned form of reference. Here's where it gets more interesting. The second definition, a woman of superior social position, especially one of noble birth. It's a term of respect. Does this chick have a dictionary? It's a term of endearment, and she's saying it's offensive. I mean, if the word lady is offensive, then what isn't offensive these days? All of this feminist claptrap is just more Orwellian word games to, one, get women to chastise and not appreciate men for using normal, non-offensive terminology. Two, it's feminists doing what all these establishment radical groups do, which is change the definition of common words so that those words fit their narrative. Like at the start of the video, feminism used to mean equality, now we want it to mean equity. Pay attention to when these groups try to change the definition of words. 
they're doing that to manipulate you. Why are we trying to kill off Eleanor's chivalry? I'm not Because that's to... really what you're talking about, no, the language Eleanor's of chivalry. trying to kill off power players. A chivalry is an old knightly code which was about men rescuing damsels in distress. That is exactly what we're trying to kill off. Mm. A younger generation of women do not want to be seen as damsels in distress. They want they want, to be, they want agency. Why don't they, they want, want to be seen, seen They can use their, their own arms. Own right. Chivalry is dead because feminism killed it. And please... Feminists are the last group of people who want agency and responsibility for their actions. But if you want to be treated like men so much, then start acting like men. I want to see a radical feminist out there on someone's roof in 100 degree weather, making sure that house doesn't leak during the rainy season. How about you get out there and risk your life fixing a downed power line? Or clean someone's septic tank? Feminists keep saying that women don't want to be seen as damsels in distress, but in critical and highly stressful moments, women almost always defer to men to solve the problem. I mean, most women are so afraid of confrontation and rejection that they can't even handle asking a guy out on a date. I got rejected one time at like 17 and was like, I would never approach a guy. One time? Okay. Yeah, one time. Ima I imagine, imagine how many guys get rejected every single day. Mm. Is, was that the first and last time you approached a guy? Yeah, absolutely. Fair enough. I've heard this from tons of women. It was actually a fairly common call on the radio show Love Line from back in the day. Girls would call in asking how to get a guy to notice them, and the host would commonly say, you know, you could just ask him out. This was pretty much always followed by, no, that's too scary. The most women will do if they really like a guy is maybe follow him around, maybe soft punch him in the shoulder, and maybe pretend to like the things that he likes. But girls will almost never ask a guy out, and the most common answer I've heard from them is because rejection is too scary. Do you have any idea how much rejection a guy has to deal with just to get one girl to go out with him? Stop saying you are strong and empowered when you can't even handle a simple no. Just to really lock down how out of touch feminists are with the desires of most people, here's another example from a different Good Morning Britain debate about cleaning. Loads of men follow me and loads of men will message me and say, oh, I've had an accident at home. I don't want my wife to see it. How do I get this stain out of the carpet? <laughs> and they love me. And they'll say, oh, I want to buy my wife a Hoover for Christmas. Up secrets. A yes. Hoover for Christmas? Are you joking? That's an amazing oh, present. Oh, my God. Is that is it? I'm sorry. That is one of the most offensive things I've heard in a really no, long I... time. Are you kidding me? After watching the whole six-minute clip, I get the impression that this woman has never cleaned before in her life, so she might not know how valuable a good vacuum is. When you are forced to use crappy tools to get the job done because that's all you have, any relief from that is good. When I was broke, had a half-working vacuum, and my parents bought me a $300 Dyson for Christmas, I freaking cheered. When I was gifted a Vitamix blender, I was very happy. Why would I find those gifts offensive? And if I did, shame on me for being so insulting to someone who took the time to figure out what I needed, did the research to find the best product, and went out and purchased it. No, a Hoover I... is, a, is a family necessity. No. Uh, to, to suggest that a woman should be getting a cleaning no, product. No, but it's not just Christmas. women, it's men as well. Why not? At least it should be half a Christmas present for each of you. Well, the idea maybe. that the woman's Christmas present is just ridiculous. Yeah, but it can be a, a wife getting offended by receiving a vacuum for Christmas because she is expected to clean is like a husband being offended because his wife bought him a set of drill bits for Christmas. Um, excuse me? So you're expecting me to fix stuff? How dare you? Drill bits are a gift for the house because fixing things is a life skill that both sexes should have. Do you see how one-sided this argument is? Feminists say men need to clean even if he has a wife who stays home while he works because cleaning is a life skill. Well, so is changing a tire, but how many women know how to do that? Feminists always tell people they are considerate of men, but please tell me, where is that? Because I never see them arguing anything for the benefit of men. By the way... I would love a drill bit set for Christmas so I can fix things. Also, we can prove that this feminist who doesn't clean has no connection to reality because Good Morning Britain did a poll. Her main point was that cleaning is a waste of time for women. Here's what the audience said. Let's have a look at our Twitter poll because we've been asking you what you think this morning and a resounding 90% of you said yes, you can be a feminist and still love cleaning. So there you are, the people the public have spoken. So you're wrong. Imagine what would happen if we had polling data for all these things that feminists are saying that women think is offensive. And on Twitter, no less. Twitter is super woke, and the feminists still lost. Unfortunately for the conversation about opening doors being offensive, Good Morning Britain didn't do a poll. But if they did, I think that the feminist Eleanor Mills would have gotten destroyed by a very similar gap.
Speaking of, let's get back to that conversation. So the kind of man who might go ladies first or pull out your chair or um, very much pay for dinner is kind of expecting something back. Sometimes when men else. date women, there is an expectation it may go somewhere. Yeah, it's but... called romance. I know, but I think, I think women feel that they have... Younger women feel Do we that want they... to stop any romance, <laughs> no. any sex, no. anything? Yes, that is what they want. This is all straight out of 1984. This may not have been the goal originally, but in the modern day, the main purpose of feminism is to destroy all pleasure that comes from relationships. You can see it in their actions. That's why they constantly tell people to do things that make them less desirable relationship partners, and it was one of the main goals of the party from the book 1984. Remove all pleasure from reproduction. Orwell got this stuff correct decades before feminists and other propagandists started using these techniques to bring down the country. Not to mention, the participants in these activist groups almost always are complete hypocrites who don't follow their own principles. In fact, I just so happen to have an example of that. Does it not make you feel good if a chap opens the door for you or says, you know, hello, I, I, how are I'm you? Delighted. You did it to me as we walked through. I know, because I'm a polite it's person. A, yes. And, but I, you're, a la- you're a lady, you're a, you're a woman. Can you imagine you're if a guy barged you? Holy crap, did I just hear that? The feminist just called her debate partner a lady. Cancel her right now and make sure she never works again. Doesn't she know how deeply offensive that term is? I mean, at the start of the video, she said that she pulled her office monoculture about what women in the general population believe. Where I think that the ladies first thing becomes quite patronizing, and certainly a younger generation of women really think so. I did a kind of straw poll in my office yesterday. And they said that terms like lady are offensive. I'm surprised that no one in the room called her on that. Now, the goal of this channel is to, one, point out the hypocrisy of these movements so people don't listen to people who are trying to harm them, but also to deconstruct some of the conditioning that is making people unhappy. Just to drive things home, feminists are not trying to hide this. They actively say that they want to break society down all the time. After a lifetime of embodying difference, I've decided that I've got no desire to be equal. I want to deconstruct the system that marked me out as different and change it. Deconstruct the system followed by stock footage of people destroying a house and change it. Change it to what? How do you know your solution is going to be any better than the old one? This is not polite conversation here. They really mean destroy the system from the ground up. That's why these groups caused and supported riots all throughout 2020. That is also why they are constantly trying to propagandize people's children. I'm here today to ask you to teach feminism to the next generation. This is because by the time children grow up to become adults, it might already be too late. My name is Liam Butler, and I am 11 years old. I have feminist parents, I am feminist, and if I do have children, nieces or nephews, I would like for them to also be feminists as well. If you have listened to enough children, you can tell that those aren't his original ideas. By the way, yes, this is a boy who identifies as a male, but those words came from his parents. We don't have time. We need to make our kids be feminists now. This is something that feminists have been pushing for many, many years. Of course you can't wait. If those kids grow up before you indoctrinate them with your fake ideas, then they won't irrationally carry out and defend those bad ideas as adults. What this leads to in a political sense is the destruction of a society because a society based on wrong ideas is doomed to fail. What this leads to in a practical sense is people making bad choices that ruin years of their life. The whole point of this is to cause people to lose the ability to make friends or start relationships because they don't know how to be desirable to other people. In reality, society is a team effort. You can't just say, I don't need half the population, or I need half the population like a fish needs a bicycle. That's not how things work. Everyone is interdependent on each other, and the only way this thing works is if we all work together. I think this scene from the movie Drumline describes it best. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, it's about a guy named Devin Miles who gets into a prestigious school and joins the marching band. This next scene is the Hell Week slash hazing scene slash training montage. Here it is. Tubas are the most important section in this band, boy! Tubas are the boom! Saxophones are the truth, the funk, and the hook. Without the percussion section, the band doesn't move, doesn't come alive. That's why we're the most important section of this band. If you didn't catch it, the joke is that every section is the most important part of the band, which is true because if one section screws up, it affects the entire group. 
This whole place needs to be a well-oiled machine. If one significant part screws up or a handful of minor things get ruined, then the whole thing will come crashing down. I don't think people realize how incredibly difficult our lives would become if we didn't have simple things like electricity. The problem is that much like a car, the system is constantly breaking and needs to be fixed and upgraded all the time. Sometimes that's due to old age, sometimes that's because of malevolent forces. But understand that in order for the car to work, it needs an engine, it needs a transmission, it needs wheels, it needs a battery, it needs a radiator, it needs brakes, it needs a steering wheel. If you remove any of these parts, you have a broken car. And I know people like to simplify, but a lot of times people have problems in their life because they are trying to drive a car without all the necessary parts. That's what feminism has been trying to convince us to do. You don't need wheels, you just need an engine. No, we need everything. In order to live a successful life where you are happy, in order to run a business, in order to run a peaceful society, you need to focus on multiple essential items. What that means in your personal life is that if you want to be happy, you can't just work a job, go home, and sleep. You need to focus on the parts of your life that are interdependent on each other. That means you don't just pay the bills, but you also take care of your health. You eat a proper diet. You exercise. You refrain from addictive behaviors. You build social circles that are full of real people instead of only having interactions with people on the internet. Here's a big one. You make sure your finances are in order. Pay off all your debts. Build an emergency fund that will allow you to pay your living expenses for six months to a year without working. Learn how to invest. Being financially secure gives you the power to say no. People who are trying to wreck your life personally, in a business sense, or politically, hate it when you have the ability to say no. They hate it when people have good families and social circles who will protect them if things go wrong. They hate it when people take care of their health because people who aren't vulnerable to disease are difficult to control. They hate people who are strong. That's why you focus on these things. You only get the ability to say no when you start to focus on your life as a whole instead of some singular aspect. But with that said, I think that's enough for this video. So if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, comment and share. If you would like to support this channel, then you can do so with PayPal, Patreon, or Subscribestar. You can find all of those links in the description. Last, don't forget to check me out on Odyssey and Minds.com. You can also find those links in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.